All right, YouTube homeowners, I'm going to install a whole house water filter uh, on the inlet line of my water softener here. I'm going to carry that pipe over to the corner across to the wall. I fasten that board to the two by fours because this filter system is heavy. This bolt is out for just a minute, but that goes into a 2x4, that goes into a 2x4. This one is going to do double duty. It's going to hold the water filter bracket, and then this is going to be for the water filter bracket also, which just goes into this strand board, and then that's in a stud. So that's in a stud, that's in a stud. I didn't, I've got a big 20 inch filter, and I didn't think this OSB oriented strand board had enough carrying or holding power so I put my other fastener into the stud just like this first one's in a stud now on the bracket the inlet and the outlet weren't oriented the way I wanted to orient my pipe so I just took out these eight lag screws picked the bracket up, flipped it around, put it back down. So, although that's labeled outlet, it's actually connected to the inlet side of these housing tops. So I've got the water going the direction I want it to. It's not labeled correctly because I flipped it, but it's how I want it. I want the water coming in from this side. This spin down filter is gonna be my first stage and I'm going to thread it straight in to the inlet instead of using a pipe, connector, another connector, less joints, less options for leaking. When I got this to this point, it seemed too loose, but as I started to carry it around another turn, it felt too tight. So I stopped and I backed it off. Once I put it in service, if I've got a leak here, I'll just close the bypass valves, take this apart. Maybe I'll figure out a way to put just enough Teflon tape to get it to tighten up right where I want it. But I'll try this. When you thread metal into plastic, you gotta be careful. I put about 10 wraps of Teflon tape on there. And of course I want this thing to be more or less pointing down along with the two cylinders. So as I tighten it, I need to be careful. I, I don't tighten it too much and crack this, crack this plastic. It's always better to thread male plastic into female metal than it is to put male metal into plastic female. You have to be super careful. Anytime you take one of these filters in or out of the housing, Lubricate the hell out of that O-ring with waterproof silicone grease. Don't fit it dry. Okay. There's the filter system. The spin-down filter is 200 microns. To start with, I'm going to put a 50 micron filter here and something smaller there. I don't know what I'll put. Maybe a 10. Um... I'll experiment with it over the first year to figure out what the best micron ratings should be uh, for my well water. But I think starting with a 200 micron spin down, there's so much junk in the water, that's probably gonna work. And we'll see how it goes with a 50 and maybe a 10. Now I gotta get water from here up to the inlet through the filter system, back out, and down into the water softener right here. That's the inlet for the water softener. Okay, so this Pentair Big Blue filter housing has one inch 
outlets. So that's a one inch male necking down to a three quarter inch PEX. I'm gonna go ahead and plumb this thing with three quarter inch PEX because my water softener inlet line is three quarter inch line. I hope that's correct. We'll see if I get the right flow rate when it's all over with. Again, I didn't tighten this too tight. I put about 10 wraps of Teflon tape and snugged it down and just quit. And if it leaks, I can actually tighten that and the PEX will rotate on there without leaking. These are the clamps I'm using. This is the crimper I'm using. It's really expensive. It was over a hundred bucks. But I tried one of those big ones that looks kind of like a bolt cutter and it was impossible to clamp this down. This is a one-handed ratcheting clamper. I think it was 117 bucks. But I did a test pinch on it a while back and it works really, really good. So that's what I'm gonna use. It's made by Watts. Now on swimming pool pumps, they say that your inlet and outlet lines need to be a straight run straight out of the device, 10 times the diameter of the uh, fitting. So that's a three quarter fitting. So I made that eight inches long. That's just slightly over 10 times. If you don't own any Nipex tools, Spend the money and get one. You'll never want to have any other kind of tool. You'll never use a crescent wrench again as long as you live. Never even want to pick one up if you get one of these Nipex wrenches. They're German, they're expensive as hell, and they work like no other tool in your toolbox. They make a lot of different tools, not just these uh, plier wrenches. Okay, here's the system. It's installed. All I have to do is connect it to the uh, house water. This is the intake side up here. The water is going to come in from this valve. I'm going to take a new fresh copper pipe. This one's 30 years old. And carry it over to this wall and secure it. And then take PEX up to there. The water goes through the filter system. I put one pressure gauge. I know people put one on each side. I just put one on the downstream side. And I'll check the pressure when the filters are new. And when that pressure starts to drop, I'll check my filters. Honestly, I didn't feel like I needed to put a pressure on the upstream side. It's just another potential point to leak. So I just blew that off. Now, <clears throat> there's a valve here and here to isolate the system. And there's, that's the bypass right there. So, water from the well goes in there, through the bypass, and back into the water softener. If I need to cut the filter out of the circuit by simply closing that valve and closing that valve, and opening that valve. Everybody puts a bypass on these things. <clears throat> now that weight is being supported by that inlet fitting, all that weight. So I put a bracket there. I put a little upward pressure to get all that level and then I secured that bracket with a screw. And I did the same thing over here. All of this weight that valve, the T, that elbow, this pre-filter, it's all being supported by that plastic fitting there. So I put a little up pressure on it to get it all level and then I screwed in this bracket. So that's supporting the weight of this part and this part up so it's not pulling down and torque, trying to torque that connection there and that connection there. So I'm going to get a fresh piece of copper pipe, get rid of this old one. 
run it over to the wall, connect to my inlet side. Then I'm going to run PEX across the back wall and in to here. Okay, I've made my connection to the house water supply. That valve right there is the valve that brought water into the water softener. I've redirected it up into the filter system, back to the back wall, and then into the water softener right there. Now, interestingly, um, I've got the filter system cut off right now. You can see I've got the cutoff valves both in the closed position. So this is out of the loop right now. And I've got the bypass valve open. So water can come in, go through the bypass, and into the water softener. But this line here is also pressurized. And so it turns out that that single gauge that I installed by happy circumstance can measure my system pressure even when the filters aren't in play so I can take a look at that and see what that pressure reading is that's the pressure basically ahead of the filter even though it's on the outlet side then when I turn the bypass off close the bypass and open the valves to the filter system that's going to read the pressure after the filters. So one pressure gauge is going to do double duty. If I ever want to check the, the upside pressure and the downside pressure, all I have to do is, you know, open and close the bypass. So my original plan was to just put one pressure gauge to have less chances for leaks, but I also saved some money and got one gauge that's doing double duty. Now I haven't opened these valves yet, but everything else in the system, everything from here that way, and everything from here that way, all those connections are pressurized and none of them are leaking, including these connections I made here. That's a new connection, that connection. That's a new connection. So everything's watertight. However, I wouldn't be surprised if I wind up having a leak here at one of these connections, you know, based on how I, I spun that filter directly into the filter housing here. And there might possibly be a leak there too, maybe. I'm gonna pressurize the, uh, the filter system now and close the bypass and see if I have any leaks from here, here, or there. Now another thing for a bunch of these PEX connectors, these compression fittings, there is no way I could have got in there with one of those long lever type uh, crimpers, you know, the kind that are lo have long handles like bolt cutters. Absolutely no way I could have reached into some of these spots. Um, I've got all kinds of stuff in the way central vat can would have interfered with me trying to you know crimp this one there's all kinds of stuff in the way so i showed earlier in the video this little uh hand crimper by watts which fits in there very easily into all those spots but even a couple of them you know i was standing almost on my tiptoes you know really reaching and i couldn't get proper grip on it to squeeze it properly so what I did was to grip it I took one of these uh, quick grip clamps and I was able to you know put it across the handles and squeeze it down you know with this with this quick grip so if you want to use one of these smaller crimping tools like this and you can't really reach it perfectly well to squeeze it with your hands, 
you can squeeze it with a one of these ratcheting clamps. That'll work. Well, you remember the first stage of my system is a spin down filter, 200 microns. Um, the first big blue filter housing, I'm going to use this, a 50 micron pleated filter that I can, you know, take out and wash it out and clean it. So that's going to be stage two or stage one of the big blue, you know, double system. And then stage three, I've got this wound string filter. I picked a 5 micron for this, so we'll see how this works out. A 200 in the spin down, a 50 in stage 1 of the big blue, and a, and a 5 micron uh, in stage 3. We'll see how this works. Now this is a big filter housing and it's already heavy empty. It's going to be even heavier when it's full of water. And it may be kind of hard to finagle it over there to fit it in place. You know, I got to work on top of that water softener, kind of lean over to install it. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to drill out the bottom here and put a drain valve, a half inch NPT. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to put a half inch plastic nipple so I'm screwing plastic into plastic not metal into plastic and then on the other end of the plastic nipple I'm going to screw on a quarter turn half inch drain valve so that I can empty it out before I have to try to lift it out of there full of water all heavy I won't do that right straight away I'm going to do that probably in a few days I'm going to go ahead and install these, these new filters in my housings and turn on the water and see if I have any leaks. Now in the bottom of this uh, filter housing, there's a short little piece of standpipe. Right there. And when you put the filter in, you want to make sure the filter opening centers onto that little bitty short stub of standpipe. If the filter's sitting on top of that pipe, you'll never be able to screw this thing shut up into the you know, top housing. So be sure you get your opening in your filter centered onto the little short stubby standpipe. Now up under here at the top housing, there's no real you know, long piece of standpipe to grab the top of the filter. Um, it basically just butts up against the rim of this opening. So when you're screwing it up there, if you just kind of gently wiggle the housing, um, you can probably get it, the filter in there to center on here. So I'm going to lubricate the threads and the o-ring with this stuff. This is what I use for my swim, all my swimming pool um, fittings and connections and whatnot. I'll put some of that on here so I don't have dry plastic on dry plastic causing friction. You're just supposed to hand tighten this thing. Don't tighten it with a wrench. But I'm going to lube it up. so. It'll come off easier. I don't have the special wrench right now. If I have a leak up here like I thought I might have, I'm going to have to take all this apart. But I do have a strap wrench. So if I have to take these two canisters off, uh, at least right now I can use my strap wrench. But I've got the special, you know, Pentec wrench on order. But lube that and the O-ring before you install it. Okay, now comes the moment of truth. I'm going to go ahead and open the valves to the filter. That valve and that valve. And see if I have any leaks on either end of the housing. Which I expect I probably will. Sure hope not. Because if so, I'm going to have to tear the whole thing apart uh, to redo 
that connection and that connection inside of there. Hope it's watertight. So the bypass valve is closed. This outlet valve is fully open. The pressure is reading zero right now. And the inlet valve there is barely cracked. And I can hear that canister number one here is slowly filling up. I'll just take my time and let this ease up to pressure. And then hopefully, once these two canisters are full, I'll get, you know, some good pressure here. I had only very gingerly hand tightened these at first. And as the pressure started coming up, they were both leaking. So I had to give them just a tiny little bit more snug. Probably no more than 15 or 20 degrees of rotation, to be honest. And that stopped them leaking. The pressure still hasn't come fully up yet. It's slowly increasing. Okay, here's a little tip I discovered. If these are under pressure and they're leaking a little bit, you will not be able to tighten them with your hand or with a wrench. You can't do it. So I had a little bit of a leak because, as I said, I just gingerly tightened these with my hands at first. I didn't want to overdo it. And I tried to tighten them while it was under pressure and couldn't do it. So I had to close the all the valves and I was able to use this valve to depressurize this part. I opened that up and depressurized and then I could easily you know tighten these a little bit more. But if you have to tighten them, if you have a leak, uh, you won't be able to do it if they're under pressure. So be sure that you depressurize before you try to adjust the tightness of these filter housings. So I got all the valves open. That valve is open. That valve is open. The bypass is closed. This thing's under full pressure. And that's basically the same pressure um, that I had at the beginning when I had these valves closed. So that's, I haven't, I don't have any pressure loss here. I don't have any pressure drop. And I'm stunned that that fitting is not leaking. Well, I'm not stunned that that was not. I got that one snug nicely. But this one, you know, I basically screwed the spin down into the filter housing. And I couldn't get it as tight as I wanted it. So I backed it off. But it is not leaking. It's not leaking from here. I wouldn't expect it to leak from here. That's a good, you know, I tighten that up first at the bench. And same thing with this fitting here, that male into that female. I tighten that up really good with thread tape. But this piece that I was just spinning onto the housing itself, I didn't think I got it tight enough, but it's not leaking. This whole thing's dry as a bone. I got full pressure. So now I've got nice, clean filtered water coming in to my water softener and all that brown gunky crap from my well is going to be filtered out so i'll do some follow-up after days or weeks or months uh, see how long it takes for a bunch of junk to build up in the spin down see how long it takes for either one or both of these to start getting plugged up and i start getting a pressure drop but for now this thing's buttoned up and all is well I'm extremely pleased and just an everyday average competent DIYer you can do this I never did this before you know I just looked on YouTube got the right pipe got the right connectors got the right crimp rings got the right tool was careful to make these connections with both Teflon tape and thread dope, that one and that one, and that one. I use thread dope plus Teflon. These are just Teflon, 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 and Teflon, no pipe dope. I've heard conflicting things about using pipe dope on plastic. I've seen people use it along with Teflon. I've seen people say, no, don't use pipe dope. 
if you're if you have you know plastic this is polypropylene but it's not leaking so what the heck I'm happy with it I'll have nice clean water my water softener is not gonna have to work as hard I may not be, have to use that iron out water softener salt anymore hopefully this is gonna take the iron out for me and I can just revert back to regular salt we'll see how it goes so it turns out I did have a leak here right here where this fitting screws into the housing so this canister would bang into the wall if I just tried to rotate that whole assembly so I just took it off I depressurized the system open that up you know close these two open this valve depressurize the system unscrewed this housing then I was able to grab this and rotate it one more full turn now the beauty of PEX is that this fitting just rotated I didn't have to disassemble all of this to be able to rotate this filter housing or filter top whatever you call it I was able to turn it and tighten it into the pen tear here without disassembling anything this uh, this fitting just rotated inside of this pipe and now I've got it back up to full pressure And I'm checking for leaks again. And so far it's dry. And my... There's a little leak there. You can see some beads of water. I may have to depressurize it again and give this just a tiny more snug. This one I think is dry. No, there's a little, few little beads of water there. So, I'll just close these valves off, depressurize it through here, give these a tiny more snug, and just keep going until I finally get it leak-free. I use some 3 8 inch fuel line to connect my spin-down drain to the uh, drain. That other drain is, you know, for the water softener, the brine drain. But since I mounted this thing right next to the water softener, I could use that pipe. And I don't have to just, you know, come out here and put a bucket or spew this onto the ground. I can just run it right into the uh, water softener drain there. These are the tools I use to cut my pipe. This is just a cheap piece of you-know-what but it cuts pecs fine it's absolutely perfect very really just cheap almost disposable tool and I use this one it's a little nicer tool it's a ratcheting ratcheting cutter for PVC but either one of these works fine to cut this three-quarter pecs no trouble at all nice square cuts clean cuts so you get good junctions. All right, so to summarize, this was a pretty easy project for an average do-it-yourself homeowner. It took me a while. Uh, it took me a while to you know, properly measure and cut all the pipe to make sure I routed it correctly and didn't have any undue stress or strain on any of the joints and whatnot. I spent pretty much an entire afternoon getting it all assembled before I connected it to the house water and then I came home at lunch when my wife wasn't here and there wasn't any use for water in the house that's when I made uh, turned off the main water supply to the house and then made my you know connections to the uh, the house water there uh, that took didn't take very long it took about maybe a so slightly less than an hour 
So, you know, if you got dirty uh, well water, you want to clean it up. This is something absolutely easy to do. Maybe a little time consuming, but it's not at all difficult. Um, you just need the right tools. And the main thing I would say is get a good crimper because those long two-handled crimpers that look like bolt cutters, I would not use those. Even if you had the strength to do it to make the crimp, you may not have the access. So get one of those small ones like I showed and you can knock this thing out and clean up your water.